Alrighty, welcome everyone to the first Pitts Weekly Webinar of the spring semester. My name is Anne Marie McLean and I am a reference librarian and the outreach coordinator at Pitts Theology Library. While some of your Candler courses are designed to introduce you to the theory and practice of worship, my job today is going to be to introduce you to the tools that will make your life a lot easier when you start to actually plan worship services. Remember, if you forget anything we discussed today, you can always watch the recording of this webinar on demand, view the presentation available as a handout in this session, and follow the links. And finally, you can always visit the reference desk virtually to chat with a librarian at pits.emory.edu slash ask. We have a lot of material to get through, so let's not waste any time and get started. If you do notice any technical issues, feel free to put them in the chat box and I will address them as best as I can. Like I said, today we are going to discuss resources in and outside of the library to guide you through building a worship service. These resources include tools for and collections of scripture and sermon ideas, music, including special music and hymns, liturgy like prayers and benedictions, and of course, images for print or digital purposes. For example, your church bulletin, digital screens, or even virtual presentations. But first, don't forget about copyright. You might think, do I really need to be worried about copyright? Who would really sue a nonprofit like a church? You do. Hopefully you are already familiar with the religious service exemption in the American copyright law. This allows copyrighted material to be performed during religious services in person without the need for a license. However, bear in mind that this exemption does not apply to a broadcast of a religious service, including online streaming, which has boomed as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Just like when we're citing sources for academic papers, it is always better to be safe than sorry. So our biggest tip is to look for instructions or restrictions in the actual thing you're citing, whether that be YouTube, the channel publisher, or perhaps the title pages of a physical hymn book. When in doubt, remember to always cite images. This is good practice even if they are from a source that has freely usable images. For example, something like Unsplash. Often the web page or source like these resources will have a suggested citation that includes a CC, which means Creative Commons. A CC or Creative Commons license is one of several public copyright licenses that enables free distribution of an otherwise copyrighted work. It's essentially used when an author wants to give other people the right to share, use, or build upon a work that they have created. In addition, Always cite text, for example, prayers or music or lyrics that are reproduced, which means reprinted in a bulletin, displayed on a slideshow, etc. Finally, consult the experts when you are reproducing music and film. The Church Copyright Licensing International, CCLI, Christian Copyright Solutions, CCS, and OneLicense.net are the most used agencies for licensing content during worship. Here's an example of instructions and restrictions printed in the beginning of the worship source book, which we will discuss later. This limits using the resource for worship and educational purposes only, meaning that if you make a reproduction, it cannot be sold. Note the acknowledgement and quotes that you can copy and paste into your own reproduction. And this can go directly under the text you're reproducing or at the end of the bulletin, so long as it's clear what you're attributing. Here's another example from the periodical Reformed Worship. Note the unless qualification in the middle of the paragraph, which is why it's always important to check very carefully the thing you're reproducing inside of the text. 
as I said before, things become much more tricky, not only when you start to incorporate audiovisual material into your services, but especially when you begin to record and stream them online. This webinar listed here is available on YouTube and it discusses all you need to know about religious worship service exemptions, licensing services and product bundles, a variety of hypothetical examples like what if I want to show Amy Grant's official music video in a Zoom worship service that's recorded. The recording of this webinar is free um, embedded in this presentation or online in the link listed above. The last thing I want to recommend is to get organized as you pull together these resources to make a worship service. This is going to include preparing a plan for the entire order of the service, listing components like songs performed by the worship band, video and audio that might be played during the service, text and images that will be reproduced, and also trying to make use of church management software programs. For example, Planning Center, which allows you to create a run sheet that outlines the entire service. This makes it easier for everyone to be fully aware of all the content and prepare for any potential copyright issues. Now that we've got that fun topic out of the way, let's look at some of these resources you will be using to plan your worship. Some of the best resources are those that are sort of a one-stop shop for all worship planning, and many of them luckily are available online. First up, we have the Revised Common Lectionary. This is a collection of readings or selections from scriptures arranged for worship during the Christian or church liturgical year. It is used officially by nine denominations in the United States, but it can be used and adapted by any church or denomination as a guide for worship. There are both online and print versions of the RLC. Um, the online version is made by Vandermilt, and it is a comprehensive one in that it includes images, prayers, scriptures, colors, hymns, etc. The Vanderbilt version is based off material that you'll find published by the Consultation of Common Texts, the CCT, which emerged from ecumenical meetings in the mid-1960s, um, in which Catholic and Protestant liturgical scholars were responding to the Second Vatican Council. Here's a screenshot of the online comprehensive RCL published by Vanderbilt. The landing page, as you see, includes the readings for the coming week, including Old and New Testament texts. There are art and prayer options in the thematic, intercessory, and scriptural categories on the right-hand side. You can navigate through years A, B, and C on the left-hand side. And this also includes slideshow formats with texts and images, including PDF versions and daily directionary readings for personal devotion. Resources are all free with attribution from this website, which you can find in the terms of use at the bottom of the page. We do like to remind folks that the RCL is not the be all end all for planning worship for several reasons. One of them being that not all scripture is included. So for example, problematic texts like Psalm 37, which has references to a Babylonian taunt and baby murder is obviously not included. Um, often minor prophets are even excluded, which tend to be more eschatologically hopeful in most cases. The RCL is, of course, not the only lectionary out there. Another comprehensive example is the African American lectionary. This is also online. It has biblical passages that are paired with service type, so it includes both traditional and distinctive services. For example, a pastor's anniversary. It has sermon writing aids, hymn suggestions, and even sermon illustrations. The material is uploaded from 2008 to 2013, so it is limited but this is a great resource for underrepresented and diverse communities. Here's one example of passages and resources paired with a distinctive service type from that resource. Um, this is for Economic Justice slash Financial Literacy Sunday. Don't we all need that? We encourage you to explore this interesting variety of content on your own. And now we'll move right along. Another comprehensive example is the text this week online. 
This is created and maintained by Janae Woodward, who's a graduate of St. Paul School of Theology, United Methodist, and has a wide variety of resources for study and liturgy based on the three-year RCL. The text this week intentionally includes a diverse variety of resources for scripture study, for reflection, and even for liturgy. It does not restrict those resources to any particular theological or ideological position, including the creator's own. One problem, since it's maintained by just one person, person, excuse me, some of the links might be not updated and might be broken, um, but it's always worth a go to look through the pages and pages of resources. Ministry Matters is yet another comprehensive example online. This has Bible study books, it has sermon and exegetical help, worship order suggestions, prayers, activities, even a research library. Ministry Matters is subscription-based, so there's a limited free version for the general public. Emory University has a complete version for its current faculty, students, and staff, and Emory alumni can purchase a discounted version after graduating. The hardest part of using Ministry Matters for our students is exactly how to get there. So you can find Ministry Matters as a database in Emory's databases online. And once you get there, you can find the research library at the top right-hand corner. You can also use pits.emory.edu slash mm as a quick link to get there. Notice here that it's gonna include children's sermons and other teaching resources. It has the Abingdon Old and New Testament commentaries, has a new interpreter's dictionary of the Bible and the one volume commentary of the NIB. And it includes elements that we've already seen like colors, scripture readings, liturgies, and so on. For you UMC folks, your denomination also has a comprehensive guide online. You can find it at www.umcdiscipleship.org forward slash worship. This is organized like the lection, by the lectionary calendar. Um, it provides preaching, hymns, resources, activities, prayers, and seasonal options. I won't go into great detail since it's not relevant to everyone, but do know that it is out there and ready for you to use. All right, now let's move away from some comprehensive resources and take a look at some image resources for you to find and reproduce while you're planning worship. A Pitt-specific resource, resource we offer for Im images when planning worship is the Digital Image Archive. This has digitized images from the library's rare books. So it has woodcuts, engravings of biblical scenes, Latin mottos, diagrams, maps, and even more. Other great news, most are all in the public domain because the copyright has certainly expired. They are all very, very old books. Here's an example uh, from an image from the 18th century history of the Old and New Testaments. Notice that you can download the image as a JPEG or a PDF. You can find more information about the book and more images from this book in the links provided. And there's also a link at the bottom for instructions on attribution, which should say something like digital image provided courtesy of Pitt's Theology Library. Some of you might have heard of Jan Richardson's Painted Prayer Book. Um, she is an artist, writer, and ordained minister in the United Methodist Church. Her distinctive artwork also appears on her blog. You can use the artwork $15 per image, or you can purchase a year-long subscription. You'll see things like collages, charcoals, things from the lectionary, prints, paintings, and so on. There are, of course, more general online resources to find free stock photos that have Creative Commons licenses. One example is Unsplash.com, which actually will generate an attribution for you if you'd like to play it safe. And, of course, another example is just narrowing your image search using the usage rights and tools in the regular search, as you can see I've done here. If you'd rather sit down and plan worship from print resources, we have those too. Most of them are going to be located in the reference and ready reference sections at Pitts, but they are all discoverable through the library catalog online at discovery.emory.edu. 
Remember that if you are working from home, you can always request for circulated books to be pulled from the stacks for contactless pickup and for articles or chapters to be scanned through electronic document delivery. First, we're going to discuss the worship source book. This is edited by the folks at the Calvin Institute of Christian Worship. It is used by Presbyterian and Reformed denominations, seeking resources to supplement materials that might already be available in denominational service books. So this includes all spoken elements of the worship service, both for general worship and in specific liturgical times. It has more than 2,500 prayers, litanies, and spoken texts. For example, call to worship, prayers of confession, prayers of the people, and so on. This also has a companion CD held in the library that contains the entire text of the book for easy cutting and pasting into bulletins or PowerPoint slides, orders of worship, and even more, making your life that much easier. Next up is the UMC Music and Worship Planner. This comes out annually, and it's of course published by the United Methodist Church. It has lectionary readings, it has visual ideas like colors, it has five categories of musical suggestions. So we have primary hymns, additional hymns, contemporary hymns, vocal solos, even anthems. As you can see, it's very visual, ple visually pleasing. It is a workbook, and you can find it on Ready Reference at Pitts. Some other print options on reference include the ecumenical version of the UMC Worship Planner called Prepare on the top right. The Iona Abbey Worship Book, which is also ecumenical. Um, it comes from the Abbey in Old England, which is now Scotland. The Book of Common Worship, that is Presbyterian. The Book of Common Prayer, that is used by Episcopalians and Anglicans. These are all available on ready reference at Pitts, and we also have circulating copies of these in the stacks. We also have lectionary-based resources, which include, first, Feasting on the Word Worship Companion. This is going to provide all liturgical pieces needed in preparing worship each week. So it has poetic prayers and responsive reading for all parts of worship. It has questions for reflection and household prayers for the morning and evening drawn from the lectionary. And this book, you'll notice, is an extension of Feasting on the Word there in the middle which is a lectionary-based commentary. This has four articles from different perspectives, theological, pastoral, exegetical, and homiletical for each text. And it connects the text both to the biblical world as well as our world. These are all available on Ready Reference at Pitts. Finally, Connections, which is a lectionary commentary for preaching and worship a multi-volume set. Um, this is designed to empower preachers as they lead their congregations to really connect their lives with scripture. So it intends to link the individual lectionary reading with scripture to the larger world and what's happening. It places each psalm reading in conversation with other lections for the day um, to really highlight the themes of the liturgical season. Note that it also has sidebars that offer additional connections to scripture for each Sunday or worship day. Even more circulating resources can be found in the book sacks. Just search Discover E. Um, you'll see Preaching God's Transforming Justice. So this helps the preacher identify and reflect theologically and ethically on the social implications of the biblical readings in the Revised Common Lectionary. It does introduce 22 holy days for justice. These include things like MLK Junior Day, Earth Day, World AIDS Day, International Women's Day, Juneteenth, we also have the Woman Wisdom, Feminist Lectionary, and Psalter. And these are celebrations of women in the Hebrew scriptures. So each service includes readings, psalms, prayers, and biological and historical information on the particular figures celebrated. There are two volumes, um, and they are written by Marine Miriam Therese Winter, um, who is a Roman Catholic medical mission sister, a theologian, and of course, an author. Especially relevant for right now is the book Prayers for Lent, Easter, and Pentecost. So you'll see that's by Donna Shaper, who is a senior minister at the historic 
Judson Memorial Church in New York City. This has prayers and litanies with lyrical language, and it's all based on a metaphor of gleaning. Finally, you'll see the Paulist Liturgy Planning Guide. This provides a compact, easy to use resource for ministries involved in general Sunday planning. What's great about this is it has information and tips for the entire pastoral team. So including musicians, lectors, Eucharistic ministers, liturgical planning committees, homilists, bulletin writers, the whole game. Continuing on in the same category, um, we have litanies and other prayers for the Revised Common Lectionary. So this obviously follows the RCL and includes a call to worship, a litany, a prayer for one voice, and a benediction for each Sunday in the Christian year. It also has texts for special occasion services like funerals, marriages, prayers for rural and urban life, etc. You'll also see the Revised Common Lectionary in print. This is, of course, published by our friends at the Consultation for Common Texts. It provides an introduction, titles of Sundays and special days, a three-year table of readings, um, the whole story of the Common Lectionary, and indices of readings in, according to Sundays of the Year, and also according to books of the Bible. The Lectionary Bible, which is also published by our friends at the CCT, is a full text edition of the Revised Common Lectionary, and it's going to flush out the references by reprinting the specific text from the NRSB Bible. Many of you incoming students might have forgotten about this ancient thing that they used to call magazines or periodicals in the academic world. But the good news is they exist for worship and they are now widely available online. So for example, Reformed Worship is a quarterly print magazine that gives practical help and support for worship planners. It has 48 illustrated pages in each issue. It gives ideas and tips and advice on planning, structuring, leading your worship, um, and has no advertising and supports traditional, contemporary, and blended types of worship. Another periodical we recommend is the Journal for Preachers. This has sermons and essays organized by liturgical season. So it's published quarterly in time for Advent, Lent, Easter, and Pentecost. Um, it's published by Columbia Theological Seminary, our friends at Emory just down the road. Um, it has submissions from world-renowned theologians and dynamic preachers. You'll find it online in Emory's databases and in print in the library. As you can see, many, many more periodicals are available in the e-journals online at Emory and in the current periodicals section at Pitts. Always remember when using these resources or any resource in general, keep in mind who is publishing it, why they might be publishing it, and what kind of bias they might have as you look through the articles and resources. For example, uh, one periodical article called The Worship Leader is slightly evangelical due to who is on its editorial board. So just things to keep in mind as you're using these types of resources. Last but not least, we have resources for music. So we have these resources both online and in print. We've got plenty at Pitts, but don't forget the Music and Media Library, which is located over at the main Woodruff Library, and it specializes in collecting scores, CDs, and sheet music, a great place to visit. Hopefully many of you have already used and heard of this particular online resource, hymnary.org. So it is linked to the Vanderbilt RCL, and it sorts results by topic, scripture, or title. Here is a home page, which you'll home page, excuse me, which you'll notice features a search box. Um, you can limit those searches to scripture passages, text, tune, keyword, even composer. Each authority page for a particular item gives information you might want to know about that hymn. For example, an author bio, scripture references, or a timeline. It also has a lectionary tool, as I said before, and there are even tutorials on the website on how to use the website. They also have a store that combines catalogs of the largest Christian music publishers available on this website.
Christian Copyright Licensing International itself provides a resource called CCLI Song Select. So with this resource, you can find and download audio previews, lyrics, and transposable chord sheets, which we all know and love if you're a musician. All of these are licensed by the CCLI for worship, and they also are arranged according to the liturgical year, just for you. Of course, the library holds a variety of print hymnals for almost every denomination in the reference section under M2117 call number. That M, of course, stands for music. And as always, there are even more options for circulating hymnals in the book stacks. Finally, there are general free music websites out there. Um, we consulted our music librarian at Woodruff and the Music and Media Library, Peter Schertz, and he recommends in particular the Choral Public Domain Library, CPDL. So this has free vocal scores, texts, translations, and other useful information. It is categorized by season or upcoming lectionary day if you would like it to be. In addition, also the Project Music Library, IMSLP. This is a collection of public domain music that is all free. It has PDF downloads. Um, it provides basic metadata like composer, year, language, time period. It has right now at least 500,000 scores and 59,000 recordings. So check that out if you get a chance. I know that was a whirlwind of resources. Even I'm exhausted. So you can always revisit them if you need to come back and think of what was that resource they mentioned. Um, you can do so on the Worship Resources LibGuide. That's one great spot. So this is going to list and link all of these things to the catalog or the online resource that I spoke of today. Um, to get there, just go to pitts.emory.edu slash guides and search worship. The recording of this webinar, like I said, including the PowerPoint presentation that you're seeing right now, will be available on demand at your personalized registration link and also on the weekly workshops website at pits.emory.edu slash WW. And of course, you can always find our reference librarians to ask further questions about accessing a resource or finding resources at pits.emory.edu slash ask. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Have a great rest of your day and best of luck in your worship planning.